Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome, one and all, to Super Podcast Action Committee, Episode 107. Huzzah! Finally, we've got sound from both of us. <laughs> one of these days, we're going to start on time. Um, and one of these days, it's going to go all the way through with no problems. Yeah, exactly. But then... So. But, yeah. where's the but the world will probably end before that happens. And, yeah, uh, so uh, to answer a question that was in the chat <laughs> early earlier, uh, why did we move from Google Hangouts, which is what we did the uh, first batch of live shows on, uh, easier for uh, our viewers to interact with us uh, while we're recording, to have a live running chat. Uh, you could kind of do it in Google Hangouts, but it's a lot more cumbersome and didn't work as well. Although I have to admit, Google Hangouts... Uh, manages uh, video podcasting better. To be fair, though, Twitch isn't... I, I don't think Twitch was originally designed to do that. But, um, eh, still learning. So, uh, no, I have not seen Nintendo's uh, Comic-Con live stream. Uh, which surprises me, because their E3 live stream was awesome. Uh... But, uh, no, I, I did not have a chance to watch any of it this week. Uh, anyway, introductions all around. Uh, my name is Andrew Eisen, and I apologize for, you know, T-shirt <coughs> and sweating like a madman, but it is really, 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 really hot in here. And over here is E. Zachary Knight. Hello, Zachary. Hello, Andrew. So, hey. other than being hot, what's, what's going on? Well, um... I found out that I am a very tense individual, <laughs> and I clench my jaw when I sleep. You might hear oh, me uh, nice. slur in my words a little bit. It's because I have an orthodontic appliance in my mouth that I'm still learning to speak around. Um, basically, uh, I'm like you know my upper teeth are digging into my lowers, and my lower are digging into my uppers, so they're like. Yeah. I'm almost doing man-made cavities because I just kind of clench and move my jaw, uh, which is mm -hmm. also putting my jaw out of alignment. So, luckily, I just... <coughs> oh, look, 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 I have mail. <laughs> that's, the problem nice. with doing, that's the problem with doing a region thing. Uh, Nintendo yeah. had awful presenters. Huh, that's surprising because all their presenters were pretty great during E3. Maybe... The, yeah, you well, try something is... new and you just blow it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, anyway. Well, and there's Comic-Con, so maybe that's just... They, they didn't put as much effort into it as they did uh, with E3. So, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't but even I... realize they were at, e at Comic-Con, so... I, I, that's news to me, so... Yeah. You know, come to think of it, now that uh, Google has purchased Twitch for a billion dollars, uh, maybe they'll combine the niceties of Google Hangouts uh, video podcasting features with uh, the better streaming options of Twitch. Or that would they'll be nice. just make everything progressively worse, <laughs> like they've been doing <laughs> with YouTube. Which yeah. is a little unfair. There, are, YouTube does more and better things now than it did, you know, five, six years ago. Unfortunately, it, it's the little things that, uh, you know, just frost my cookies. Uh, the, the little <laughs> changes, the, the the UI changes, the, the menu alterations. Um, they, j you know, here here's my metric. How many clicks does it, uh, mouse clicks, does it take to perform a certain action? Okay, you change something. How many clicks does it take to perform the same action? Is it more clicks than you've failed? <laughs> and yeah. uh, that—that's usually what happens. Is um, you know it now. It, you know, getting to my video manager in YouTube now is more difficult. It takes more clicks than it did. Interacting with my audience is more difficult. Be, uh, you know, for a lot of reasons. You know, I can't reply to anyone who doesn't actually have their Google Plus account linked with their YouTube account, which is annoying. Uh, they they stopped doing the inbox thing. They started going, only some of your stuff is going to go to the inbox. Now it's like, well, that doesn't help. Now it's really difficult to... Um, uh, it's really difficult to um, figure out who is commenting and where. Uh, it, it, so, 
Uh, but there are, more, you know, to be fair, mm -hmm. some of the uh, technological upgrade. It's more robust. You can do more things with it. Um, but it, it's the small stuff that just <laughs> grinds my gears, yeah. man. So, but yeah. uh, you know, we'll see what it does with Twitch. Maybe it will leave well enough alone. Maybe it will uh, make uh, lots of improvements, which would be awesome. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, uh, sorry, I, I'm I'm still kind of <laughs> verklempt <laughs> over the uh, technical difficulties we were experiencing towards the beginning of the show. I thought uh, this yeah. is the week. Third third time's the charm. Um, and it's hot, and I've got this orthodontic appliance in, and um, I'm trying to shoot a video, and I'm pointing at stuff you can't see. Uh, I have it set up, <laughs> and which means it I have to kind of climb over my camera and tripod to get into my kitchen, <laughs> where my fridge is, where all the cool drinks are. Um, but uh, so I'm making a new video for you guys, which uh, ho hopefully you'll enjoy. It's actually not a Q and Andrew; it's one of my scripted videos. So look forward yeah. to that. I might actually have it up by the time this gets uploaded to YouTube. So. Um, yeah, I watched your uh, I watched your one about Babe and and uh, very interesting, but <laughs> yeah, that's I'm nothing if not passionate. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I was just watching that and I was just like, man, he just really did not like the show. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you. The uh, you know the animatronics and CG and everything that was wasn't as good as it probably could have been at that time. You know, if the film had not won a visual effects Oscar, I would have just said, eh, the effects are crap, whatever. But the fact that it <laughs> won an effects o Oscar kind of sets an expectation. I mean, they're, they're just bad. Um, <laughs> but I managed yeah. to uh, rant, angrily rant about uh, Babe, the talking pig movie from 1995, for about seven and a half minutes, and I didn't drop one F-bomb. <laughs> Uh, that was un it was unscripted. I mean, I knew generally what I was going to say because I I kind yeah. of uh, do soft rehearsals like in the car on my drive to work and drive home, and <laughs> I found myself driving and I'd start driving angrily and dropping f bombs about the stupid pig in his <laughs> effing movie, and I'm like, this I probably shouldn't rehearse this while I drive, but I managed to get through it without cursing, so I, I was yeah. quite proud of myself. Well, that's so, good. Uh, that's good. So, uh, play any games? What you playing? I know you're um, developing stuff. Playing anything? Yeah, uh, let's see. Playing stuff. Well, I actually got, um, uh, I, I got a free code for a game, uh, for Toto Temple Deluxe. Um, it's a game by Juicy Beast, and, uh, I, they, they made a game that I really liked. I played it first on, on the Ouya, and, yeah, you know, it's called uh, Nightmare Tower, and it's just you know you just uh, you you're a knight and you sh you get launched off a rocket, <clears throat> and the goal is to uh, to hack your way up up the tower and and rescue the princesses and all this stuff. And I really enjoyed the game, and I wrote some good reviews and got in touch with the developers and had had some good conversations with them, and uh, and uh, they they sent me an email just a couple of days ago and said, hey, do you want a free code for uh, our new game, Toto Temple Deluxe? And I was like, yeah, of course I'll take a free game. And uh, and I, I I knew I knew about the game because, uh, you know, I, I followed them on Twitter and everything, so I see their updates. And <clears throat> I've been really looking forward to trying this game out. And, uh, and so they get in contact with me when my entire family's out of town, so I can't play this game because it's a multiplayer only game <laughs> there's some sing single player stuff in there but it's just kind of training levels but I'm like I don't have anybody to play with how am I supposed to play this game <laughs> so I played I played the training stuff for a couple of couple of or you know for a little while maybe half an hour 45 minutes and and I enjoyed it but it's just one of those games that you really really need other people to play with and uh, and so I'm gonna have to figure out who I can drag here, or maybe I can drag my Ouya somewhere else and play, maybe at my brother's house, because uh, we're actually going to try to get together next week, because in August, August 1st, we're going to be 
doing a uh, a game jam, and uh, and so I'm trying to get figure out what his schedule is so that uh, so that I can send him requests for artwork and stuff. But uh, we'll see how that that goes. But uh, but yeah, that's the the one game. Well, that and uh, let's see, I played also. Uh, finished wrote up a review for a game called Run Frosty Run uh, from a local Oklahoma developer called Winter Stories Studio, and uh, they they're uh, fairly new. They've re they released two games so far. Or before that, one was just a skeet shooting game, and the other one was a uh, Slender Man uh, game, survival horror thing, and uh, and so they they released. Run Frosty Run uh, last week, and I downloaded it and wrote up a review and and everything. So, so th those are the games that I've been playing, and and at the same time I was making my own my July game, which uh, I just released uh, put up on my website yesterday. It's called Amazing Mazes because I ran out of I couldn't think of any anything clever for a name other than a lousy pun, and. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just a simple you know navigate the maze and get to the flag and you know and and, uh, and I managed to get lost in one of my own mazes, <laughs> so I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm not sure if that's a sign of a successful design or not. <laughs> well, the thing the thing I I you know I, I never I was never a big fan of mazes uh, growing up and you know I I was just always one of those ones that. Uh, I either started from the finish and worked my way back because that was always easier, <clears throat> or I would just say screw it and bulldoze my way through, and uh, <laughs> you know just just on paper. But uh, and so um, so I actually had to design some mazes for this game, and uh, and then going from the full design where I could see the entire maze in my level editor to the screen where I can only see like a small portion of the maze at any given time, that really uh, that really threw me for a loop because it's just like you, know, you, you can't see as far ahead down certain paths as you would normally if you can see the entire maze so, so yeah, it's a very interesting experience testing those out <laughs> hmm. yeah. I've been, so what about uh, you? Have you played anything? <laughs> yeah, I've uh, been playing Professor Layton and the uh, uh, Miracle Mask, uh, which is game number four, I believe, uh, the first yeah. one on the 3DS, and uh, it's good. Uh, they've been, uh, well, so far at least, they, uh, the writers have been uh, a lot more solid on their plots. Um, yeah. <laughs> Unwound Future, the third game in the series, has probably the dumbest plot of any <laughs> fictional work ever. It, yeah. it It's amazing that a game that's basically logic puzzles has absolutely no logic in its story. It's still incredibly <laughs> charming and well-written and cute. You love all the characters, but yeah. holy biscuits, is that story dumb. Uh, the first and second games are... The premise, uh, <laughs> w the, the major mystery, uh, the solution to it, what is actually happening in both games one and two are is, is kind of stupid. Uh, yeah. But most everything the game follows that it, its own internal logic, so you, so you swing with it. Um, the third game, though, doesn't make any sense on <laughs> any level. It... it I, I may have to do mm -hmm. a video explaining why the third game is so stupid, <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah. Uh, Miracle Mask is uh, is fun. The puzzle, <coughs> although it does have one puzzle with an incorrect solution. Um, I uh, you, you know I'm playing with the puzzle. And I'm like, oh, I'm a three. Enter and goes, nope. I'm like, four. He goes, yes. I'm like, you're wrong, sir. <laughs> it is four. <laughs> so I may make a video, you know, showing uh, the correct solution, you know, showing why uh, yeah. you know, puzzle number whatever is has an incorrect solution. Um, 
And it, it's one of those things where you're like, oh my gosh, I, I found a typo in this RPG with about two million words in it. It's like, yeah, good on you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, there, there's 150 whatever puzzles in the game. One of them has an incorrect solution. It happens. Um, yeah. But, you know, in a Professor Layton game, you know, kind of, it's like, don't I feel smart? <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, uh, that, that, that could just kind of remind me, uh, when I was a teenager, my mom had bought uh, um, an IQ test uh, program for our computer, and I was playing around with it and taking the IQ test. I don't remember what I scored, but there was this one question. It was just, you know, it was one of those, uh, pick the item that doesn't belong. And, uh, and so I was, I was looking at this, there was a, uh, a glass, you know, just a, you know, a drinking glass, a, uh, a pitcher, you know, for, you know, to put juice or iced tea or whatever in, a cowboy hat, and a purse. And I was looking at this, and I was like, well, the purse doesn't belong. And uh, and my reasoning for it was that uh, you know the glass was about a pint, you know the pitcher about a gallon, and the the, the hat was a ten gallon hat. And uh, you know so everything was referred to as a uh, you know in uh, in liquid measurements, but the purse wasn't. You know? Mm-hmm. you know nobody refers to a purse as a three quart purse or anything like that. So I was like that's it. That doesn't belong. No, no, I was wrong because. Because the hat doesn't belong. Because you don't put things in a hat. Other than and your I'm head. Like, <laughs> yeah. Or like, uh, or money when you're panhandling. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen people and, do that. And yep. uh, you know, you draw names from a hat and magicians you know, all that stuff. are always but, putting but cards still. and stuff in their hats. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. yeah uh, so it was, I even wrote the the developers of the software and and told them, hey, uh, this this has two solutions, and both make sense. But uh, this question just doesn't belong in this entire test if if it has two solutions. Yeah, uh, you know, sometimes in uh, Professor Layton, I think this might be the only puzzle where the answer is truly wrong. Um, yeah. Uh, a, a lot of times, you know, I'll pick a answer and it's incorrect, and then, then I'll read the game solution, and it's like, oh, okay, from that perspective, I, I was looking at it a completely different way, but from the way that they yeah. wanted you to look at it. Or sometimes the art is just, to my eyes, unclear. For example, there, there's one in Miracle Mask where you're supposed to uh, use a set of clues to figure out where in a uh, theater someone is sitting. And yeah. uh, it has a picture <laughs> of the theater with you know row A B C D whatever, and all the row num and all the uh, column numbers, and you're like you know row row G seat six or, or whatever, and um, so I'm I'm looking at the theater and I'm looking at the clues. I'm like okay, so she has to be sitting on the left side. Okay, so she can't be sitting in the front. Okay, so she's here, and I type it in, and it's wrong. And what I figured out was the th- the picture. Uh, the stage was on the opposite end from where I was assuming the stage was. I, I thought the stage was towards the bottom, uh, but yeah. the stage was like actually on the are. top. It, it just wasn't clear to me where the stage was. The The way the seats were drawn, it looked like... So I had it completely backwards. Uh, so it's not wrong, it's just a function of the art wasn't clear enough to me. You know, I, I just yeah. got the orientation of the theater wrong just due, due to the art. Yeah, it happens. So uh, anyway, yeah, let let us let us start the show. Uh, the show proper this week uh, we had a uh, poll which asks who is responsible for crappy network perform. Uh, I'm sorry, crappy Netflix performance on Verizon. <laughs> uh, Verizon, Netflix, or uh, intermediaries like uh, Level Three or Cogent. And uh, we had 259 people respond. And here it is. Uh, almost everyone says it's Verizon. Ninety-three uh, percent. <laughs> two hundred and forty-one out of two hundred and fifty-nine people voted for Verizon. Uh, only three percent for Netflix and four percent for uh, Level Three Cogent. Th- those type of areas. Uh, we did have someone ask. Uh, where'd I put it? Let's see. <laughs> that 
he wanted an option to vote for uh, both Verizon and the uh, uh, the intermediaries. That was uh, Techno Geek. Uh, says the poll really needs uh, the ability to vote for options one and three. But uh, when I originally wrote the poll, I wrote uh, Verizon, Netflix, both, or nobody, or none of them, or, or something like that. But when you add a third person, it's like, okay. Now I, now I need a fourth option for Verizon and Netflix, a fifth option for Netflix and the intermediaries, a sixth you know, it's, the poll gets too damn long, so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, it is a, it has been a bit of a he said, she, she said thing, uh, but from all the blogs, you know, because uh, Level 3 is, uh, weighed in on this, and Netflix is weighed in on it, Verizon's weighed in on it, uh, all kinds of independent uh, tech blogs have weighed in on it, and most people seem to think that it's Verizon who is uh, yeah. the culprit, and that makes sense even if you're not looking at it from a technological uh, or engineering standpoint, uh, because Verizon's really the only one who has something to gain from doing that. Netflix, other than just being purely stupid spiteful, doesn't have <laughs> any... Uh, ju in unless they're just, yeah, uh, you know, middle finger to Verizon. Uh, they're the if, if Netflix was doing that on purpose, they'd lose customers. However, oh, Verizon, yeah. if Verizon does it, it's like, oh, oh is, is the Netflix performance not working? Well, we have a video service that's working just dandy. So, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. from a money perspective, it seems a lot more likely that if anyone is um, responsible for this, it's Verizon. Especially mm -hmm. since Netflix is already paying Verizon for better performance, which it's not getting. According to... Yeah. Uh, Level three cogent one of them. Uh, they said that um, it's it's on Verizon's end. They're they're just refusing to hook up a technical you know a, a port a doodad, and they said you know we'll do it for yeah. you. We got the part right here. We'll come down there and plug it in. It takes ten minutes. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, bad Verizon, bad bad bad. Yeah, another. Uh, yeah. Do, do you agree, Zachary, that it's most likely Verizon in this case? It's being yeah, a putz. everything I've read. Everything I've read about it is that uh, you know it, it's definitely Verizon because you know Verizon and Level Three, they they have that connection point, okay? Because Level Three is basically the uh, the the series of pipes, you know, I guess whatever you want to call them between Netflix and everybody else, and uh, and then so Level Three has to connect to to Verizon and Comcast and Cox and all those places, and. Uh, and and everything I've read says that uh, everything is fine on level three's end, and everything's fine on Verizon end, and except for where those two connect. You know, like like you said, you know, there, there's there's just not as not enough ports there. You know, it's like Verizon's like, well, Netflix is using up all the bandwidth in the in the ports we gave them. It's like, okay, well, open up these other fifty ports that you have available, and uh, and so. And but Netflix doesn't want to do that, and they even admitted that that uh, you know the reason they're not doing that is because Level Three is not paying them for it, and it's just like yeah. Um, they're so <laughs> Verizon seems to want money from Netflix and the intermediary, because uh, Verizon seems to you know their argument, if I'm reading them correctly, seems to be well it's Netflix's fault for sending it through the intermediaries that it uses because we don't have stuff hooked up through them. You know, one guy uh, sent it through a VPN and it started working a whole heck of a lot better, so... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that, and that, that ticked me off. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, here's an interesting story from a... a, co a I don't know. Oh, yesterday. Uh, <laughs> the telecoms <laughs> filed with the FCC uh, essentially saying that uh, they're afraid that Netflix will start charging them for access to uh, the Netflix service. Which yeah. is kind of funny because Verizon and uh, Comcast are already charging Netflix for <laughs> decent service, which uh, Verizon actually isn't uh, 
doesn't seem to be providing. Uh, Comcast, on the other hand, according to Netflix, the once they started paying them, the service uh, shot up. So, yeah, yeah, fun stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I just want to read this. Uh, this is actually a quote from Verizon. You know, they sent out this because Level 3 posted this nice infographics type chart that shows the entire network connection between Netflix and, and the Netflix consumer uh, on a Verizon network. And this is what Verizon says in response to that. <clears throat> it says, last week, Level 3 decided to call attention to their congested links into Verizon's network. Unlike other content delivery networks, which pay for connections into ISP networks to ensure they have adequate capacity to deliver the content they have been hired to deliver, Level 3 insists on only using its existing settlement free peering links, even though, as Level 3 surprisingly admits in their blog, these links are experiencing significant congestion. Level 3 solution? Rather than buy the capacity they need, Level 3 insists that Verizon should add capacity to the existing peering link for additional downstream traffic, even though the traffic is already wildly out of balance. So, so there you go. You have Verizon basically admitting that they won't open up any more ports because Level 3 is not paying them enough. And, uh, and it just... It's it's amazing to see them admit it outright like that. Yeah. Well, the economy's tough. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> but uh, I was actually going to say earlier, and this is completely off topic, but I'm very proud of it. Is uh, a couple days ago, I completely uh, I I paid off my student loans. So. Oh. Yay. oh nice. Of course, uh, <laughs> now I'm I'm paying for the uh, appliance that I'm trying very hard to speak clearly around. Um, <laughs> but it's not as expensive as my student loans, so uh, that's alright. So, uh, thank you everyone for participating in the poll. We'll have a, a new poll next week. Uh, so, that's good. Let's see. Uh, first topic of the day. We've got almost a theme going. We're going to talk a lot about the UK, which uh, a, pl a, a magical place where Zachary and I don't <laughs> live. So <laughs> But I have been there, so Oh have you, have you? Yeah. Back in uh, two thousand to two thousand two I was there uh, on a mission for my church, so Oh neat. Yeah, I was I mostly had... in the, the Liverpool and North Wales area. I had the opportunity to go to Wales a couple of years ago, uh, but I couldn't afford it, both money and time. Uh, my, my chorus was invited to participate in the uh, Choir of the World uh, competition, and um, would have been a would have been a cool trip, but uh, just wasn't in the cards at that point in my yeah. life. Uh, and my chorus won, so that they did they they did okay, they did okay without me. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, Je Jesse, who's watching us about you know three in the morning right now in the UK. Uh, you keep us honest and let us know if we're misspeaking about uh, <laughs> um, about the UK stuff. So uh, the first uh, story that we're going to talk about is uh, a uh, UK UK Prime Minister David Cameron's. Uh, oh man, I should have read this first. Uh, basically, a UK MP is calling for laws to deal with uh, theft of virtual items in. Well, maybe not n exclusively video games, but virtual. Uh, but that's what you think of when you think of virtual items. And um, it's, it seems to be just a proposal so far. Uh, and he says, uh, the perception from some people is if you steal online, it's less of a crime than if you steal physically. If it genuinely is someone who's paid in the game and they've had that stolen, that's probably no different to something in the physical world. And while that's true... I have to k kind of make the point that in some games that might be part of the game's design, the ability to take stuff from mm -hmm. other players, uh, regardless of whether yeah. they've paid real money for it or not. I mean, you could also argue I, I, I'm paying paid for the game or I'm paying a monthly cost to play for the, in this game and... You know, I earned this sword by destroying a bunch of orcs, and you took my damn sword, which I could have easily hawked on eBay for X number of dollars, so... Thief! <laughs> so... Yeah. 
I, I personally, I'll, I'll get your opinion in a second here, Zachary, but I personally don't, uh, by default, have a problem with laws against the theft of virtual items. But I'm, I, I, I th that, that needs to be worded very, very carefully so you're not, you know, damaging g games that are supposed to be played that way or people aren't even gaming the system. Yeah. Uh, th th this should uh, cover more hackerish activities along, you know, when people hack yeah. into your WoW account or something and loot your stuff. Yeah. So, uh, w w what's your when, idea when on the whole uh, thing? <clears throat> When this story popped up earlier this week, uh, the the thing that that I was reminded of was a story from a couple of years ago. Um, there's there's a game called Habo Hotel. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But there was a there was a story or two back back you know a couple of years ago where where some players who had spent you know a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand bucks in this game, you know to to build their hotel or whatever. Or hotel room, or I, I don't remember exactly what it is, but basically their their accounts got hacked, and the hackers uh, logged into their account and gave all of their stuff away to the hackers' uh, uh, real account, so that that hacker could then sell hawk all that stuff on eBay and stuff. But uh, um, and so when I when I heard the story, I'm like, okay, that's probably the kind of stuff that that this law is referring to is that uh, you know you just you know where somebody hacks into your account steals all the the stuff you you bought or earned or whatever but but then you know but when it comes down to it though laws like these are never that straight are never that uh, narrowly defined um, yeah uh, something else that I'm reminded of is that you know here in the United States we have we have a um, a law called. Uh, now I'm trying to remember what the law is. Uh, it's the the, the computer yeah, computer fraud and abuse act, and uh, mm -hmm. and and basically this law is meant to you know to punish people who who maliciously hack into systems or or computers or stuff like this, but the law continually and and frequently gets. Uh, abused to apply to to somebody who violates the terms of service of a website. You know, say say that you uh, every time somebody posts some uh, a topic in a chat room or in a uh, in a forum, you go on there and you you troll them or something. You know, that that could be a violation that website's terms of service. But if a uh, if a uh, a, uh, a, a a, di a district attorney or, or somebody has an axe to grind with you, they'll slap you with CA CFAC uh, violation, and you're looking at 30 years in jail. Yeah, and then we had the Aaron Schwartz case where he uh, accessed a network he was allowed to access, accessed a website he was a website service that he was allowed to access, downloaded documents he was allowed to do download, but then was facing 35 years in jail because he did that. Yeah, and uh, you know it's it's absolutely insane, and um, and and so so when I think about this law that uh, this uh, UK gentleman is uh, is proposing, I'm like, it's going to be abused, uh, you know, yeah. you know, even if even if they do narrowly define it, or at least you know define it in such a way that you wouldn't think that uh, you know looting an Eve uh, would qualify. If somebody, if the person you're stealing items from in Eve uh, doesn't like you, they could, and they know where you live, they could report you, and and you could be facing crime, uh, criminal charges because of that, and mm -hmm. and that just really uh, makes me wary of supporting anything like this. Yeah. So the law, um, and uh, Weatherly here. Uh, points out that the the law is meant to focus on uh, large scale item thefts, you know, stuff you know, <coughs> instead of something that's worth five bucks or five pounds as he says. And I have no idea how much how many bucks that is. Um, uh, five pounds would be probably seven to eight dollars, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um one of the ideas of it is to uh 
uh, make uh, online theft equivalent to real world theft, at least in a uh, punishment perspective, uh, to, to to make those the same. And uh, do you think that that is appropriate? You know, making the uh, you know if you steal you know a hundred dollars worth of physical CDs, uh, that the whatever the punishment is, be it jail time or fine, if you steal a hundred dollars worth of some virtual item. Um, or even make it a thousand dollars of CDs and a thousand dollars of a virtual item. Mm -hmm. um, should the uh, perpetrator of that crime face the same punishment as the perpetrator of the physical theft? Um, that's a good good question. Um, yeah, me uh, personally, uh, I, I I you know digital theft and physical theft. Uh, from a moral or ethics point of view, are the same thing, but the, but there's certainly a difference in damages in in the damage done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because like, and and, and a lot like, of that is physical inventory. If I steal something from your house, you are now missing the thing from your house. However, if I, of course, it kind of depends on how this theft works. Are we talking about someone, you know, stealing your digital sort of omen? That's from. Thundercats, sort of omens. Uh, your your <laughs> digital sort of omens, or did they make a copy of it? I, you um, know, it, well, it, I, yeah. Did did they totally I, I remove think, uh, it from your account? Yeah. I think I think uh, one one of the things I I would be wary of in comparing a real life crime versus a virtual crime is that uh, you know a real life crime has the potential for violence to be involved. Um, so if somebody you know shoplifts at the store, you know, there, there's the potential that that shoplifter would attack somebody on their way out if somebody tried to stop them. Um, and, and so that, that puts in a little different perspective than somebody who, you know, uh, you know, steals some items from a virtual store. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also the, uh, the question of restitution. You know, if, uh, you know, if you go and steal, uh, you know, a uh, a car, you know, and then you you drive it down to your buddy's chop shop, and they chop it up and sell the parts on, on the on the black market. You know, that's the restitution in that case isn't as feasible as it would be online. Where if you went in and you stole somebody's virtual car from an online race car game, you know, it, all you have, you know, in that case. Um, restitution is really simple. You know, the game developer just needs to be alerted to the theft, and they could, they could restore that per that person's car just like that. You know, and uh, and so, so I think, um, I think in in you know the lack of violence, the more the 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 easier access to restitution for the victim. You know, the crimes just don't seem as major to me, and and I I really wouldn't be comfortable trying to punish them in the exact same way. You know, mm -hmm. just like, um, you know, from from a totally flipped on its head perspective, you know, with modern copyright laws, you know, if you go and steal, you know, two CDs from Walmart, you know, you're looking at a, you know, and you get caught, you're looking at a fine of like 500 bucks and maybe 30 days in jail. Now, if, you know, depending on, on you know, criminal record and stuff. But if you go to Kazaa or, or the Pirate Bay and download, you know, 30 songs, you're looking at $2.5 million in fines. And uh, and so that that's this flipped on its head, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it just makes no sense to me to yeah. to punish them like that. And, well, and, I, I, and I think... So, go ahead. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, it's... It's that kind of thinking that that says, okay, if they go ahead with this law, are are we going to see five, ten, twenty years down the road some copyright lobby or some big industry lobby saying, hey, these crimes are even worse than 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 things, and so we need to, to up the punishment because people are still stealing items, and and so now you're looking at at uh, you know punishments that that where where the 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 real life version of it pales in comparison to the punishment for the the online uh, mm -hmm. version. So, so, yeah, yeah, that, that's my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it kind of depends on. Uh, 
you know, what are you punishing here? Are, are you punishing the perpetrator's lack of ethics and morality? Or are you punishing the damage, you know, punishing them for the amount of uh, damage that they've caused? Either uh, physical, emotional, monetary, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, it kind of depends on how you look at punishment as to how you would approach this uh, yeah. physical theft versus uh, virtual theft. So... Yeah, it's interesting. Although, you know, completely off topic, but you know, sometimes you you have to wonder how they come up with the uh, sentence, you know, the the fines and sentencing. Because I've seen people, mm -hmm. you know, go to jail for what you know, ten to twenty years for murder, and then you'll see another person in for like thirty-five for drug possession. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> really? Well, and. and but when it, when it comes to that sort of thing, you know, it's uh, it's the whole concept of being tough on crime, you know, where where politicians have this mindset that they need to be seen as being tough on crime mm -hmm. for for people to vote for them, and and being tough on crime is is a very different thing. It's like a whole side of the you know a whole different side of the perspective than being smart on crime. You know, yeah, you can yeah, be yeah. smart on crime, or you can be tough on crime. You cannot be both, and uh, and so that's where these laws come from. And and exclusive. so <laughs> it shouldn't be, but it, that's just the way it seems to me. But uh, so so that so when it when it comes to being tough on crime, they're like, okay, well, what's the low hanging fruit that that we can do? So that's why you see, uh, you know, drug possession charges being shot through the roof and mandatory minimums and and then and there's that and then there's also like sex offenders you know it's like they want to be tough on crime so let's uh, let's play with the sex offender uh, offender registry and let's let's increase the number of people who have to register let's increase the time they have to register let's let's increase the size of of uh, the the radius around certain buildings and and stuff that that they can't live near and and all of this stuff, and and it. Well, yes, and you also start targeting the types <laughs> of crime that people have greater emotional responses to, um, mm -hmm. which a lot of times can supersede, um, you know, a <laughs> intellectual response. Uh, it reminds me yeah. of uh, you know a lot of the uh, zero tolerance policies you see uh, over a lot of uh, you know you see that in schools, you see that uh, uh, for drug issues, and uh, one of the things I've always said is. Um, you know, zero tolerance shouldn't mean zero common sense, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, because uh, the classic examples, at least from America, are uh, these kids getting uh, expelled and even the cops and FBI called on them when they uh, eat a piece of toast or a Pop-Tart into the vague shape of a gun or are running around at recess going pew, pew, pew. And it's like, zero tolerance, that's that's the shape of a gun. It's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. There's just you know, there, there's just so many laws out there that uh, you know. I I'm at the point where I think you know, my my thoughts are is um, uh, you know, we need a you know constitutional amendment to automatically apply a uh, a sunset clause to all laws. So you know, if you pass a law, that law has to be renewed every ten years. You know, mm -hmm. it it does not go stay in effect indefinitely. I think we need a constitutional amendment for that, um, and and uh, that that itself would solve a lot of our problems right now. Um, and, uh, and I think I think I think that would help a lot. And then another one would be, uh, you know, just really increase the threshold for passing a law. You know, because right now most laws only have to pass like fifty percent. Uh, 50 plus one, 50 percent plus one vote in 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 uh, most houses of government, uh, in order to pass and then go on to be signed into law by however means it is. And I think that re that should probably increase to 75 percent, because that's really uh, you know it, it it needs to be that high, because uh, that that's a good way to cull a lot of the the, the crap laws that that get passed. Yeah. But of course, that would prevent a lot of good laws from being passed too. But I think uh, I think that's a, a, a worthy exchange there. <laughs> yep. So moving on, 
Uh, another story from the great <coughs> mythical land of the UK. Uh, in 2015, uh, folks who allegedly uh, pirate music movies and other copyrighted thingies uh, will receive warning letters that say, Hey, you just totally pirated that movie, dude. That's not cool. You shouldn't do that. Here, here's a link to Amazon where you can go buy a legitimate copy of that. Um, this is in contrast to um, an initiative that had more punitive measures like disconnecting you from the internet if you, uh, you know, you get like three or four of these letters, or maybe six, and they're like, well, you, you can't seem to behave, so we're unplugging your internets. Uh, they moved away from that, and now you're just going to get a bunch of letters informing you of what you've <laughs> allegedly done why it's wrong, <laughs> and how you can fix it. You know, instead of uh, pirating Weird Al's new album, uh, you can go to Amazon Don't and... download this song. Yeah, from a couple albums if, ago. If they, send, if they send that song out to everybody... <laughs> like a Rickroll. <laughs> I'm in total agreement with this law. Just send Don't Download This Song to everybody. <laughs> so, you know, instead of getting these little... Um, so they just get a, 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 a YouTube link to the Don't lo Download This Song <laughs> video, kind of like a Rickroll. You know, every time yeah. you do that, you get... And it <laughs> auto-plays, and you have to sit there. It's like, yeah, don't download this, I know. So, and you sh totally should uh, buy Weird Al's new album, Mandatory Fun. came out last week, and it is... Oh, yeah. uh, it's very cool. It's... Uh, it, it went number one on the Billboard 200 yeah. chart. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, the... I, I, I'm serious. Okay, we're we're getting off topic here, but that that whole one video a day for eight days, eight days mm -hmm. and eight or eight videos in eight days thing, mm -hmm. that was just the best marketing thing I've ever seen a musician do. And you know the fact that he got you know he had a uh, college humor and um, uh, I don't know a bunch of other people, uh, a bunch of other websites on there, uh, you know, participating in it. And it was just such a great thing. I was like, I was looking forward to the, each video every single day. I was like, yeah, when's he going to release? When's he going to release? You know, and, and, uh, refresh, and refresh, so now, refresh. <clears throat> yeah, now I'm waiting for all of them to actually go to his YouTube channel. He's got four of them on his YouTube mm -hmm. channel now, and I need the other four on there. So, because And they're the ones that, uh, you know, they're on some obscure website that I don't even want to go to anymore. But, <laughs> but yeah. Now that we're off topic, um, yeah. let's see, what were we talking well, about? Well, uh, sending uh, yeah. a, a light slap on the hand to folks who uh, allegedly pirate uh, music, movies, video games, things like that. Another interesting note is a bunch of my uh, workmates know that I got the Weird Al album and are like, Hey, burn me a copy of it. I'm like, No! It costs ten dollars. Oh, yeah. Buy the damn thing from Amazon, you lazy jerk. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm like, do you even use physical media anymore? Yeah, you, you just use MP3s and stuff, right? I'm like, yeah, five ninety nine. Just you can get the entire damn album digitally for five ninety nine. I'm not burning you a copy. Stop it. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> so, um, do you think? Uh, do you think such a program? Uh, is going to make a difference, or if people are just going to set up filters to <laughs> throw it straight into the trash? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to make a difference at all. Is it, you know, for one, you know, these things are probably going to go out to every single uh, internet consumer out there because really, there's no way to uh, properly tell if somebody's actually pirated anything. So basically, everybody's going to get them. And if everybody's getting them, you know, everybody's going to ignore them because there's no teeth to them. And, uh, well, especially and, if and they're so, getting them erroneously. Yeah, especially it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, you know, I, I get this letter. I'm like, um, I wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't download anything. I think this is spam. Click, hit spam. It goes into my junk folder. Mm -hmm. Now, that's probably what's going to happen in 99.999% of, of cases. The other... Point zero zero one percent. The people are gonna be like, huh? And yeah. and they'll ask. It's like, hey, did any of you guys download videos? And everybody's gonna go, no. It's like, okay, spam. <laughs> I have so. to wonder um, 
what percentage <laughs> of people who pirate movies, music, uh, video games, things like that, genuinely don't understand that what they're doing is not cool? You know, and I'm choosing my words carefully so I don't start a fight in the chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I I have to wonder what percentage of people who download music that you know for free are aware mm. that you know this is not a legitimate source for the song or movie or whatever. You are really yeah. supposed to pay for it. You know, I actually do know a couple people who are like, it's great. There's there's this site where there's all these free movies. It's like, why would I? This is awesome. Why would I use Netflix? That costs eight dollars a month. It's free here. Really, genuinely not <laughs> seeming to understand that this is a pirate site. <laughs> you know, yeah. after after wonder well, what I percentage think, of that is. I I don't know. That, that's a good question, and I, I really don't think we're ever going to get a good answer for 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 that. Um, you know, there's been a lot of studies that say you know, uh, you know, people who pirate the most tend to buy the most. Because they, mm -hmm. they get to experience a lot more content than they would without pirating. And so they end up buying more stuff that because they find something new that they really like. Um, but, but when it comes to people who download and don't realize what they're doing is wrong, I, I think it's getting uh, to a point where people don't really think about copyright at all. You know, I, I used to do a lot of work with teenagers and stuff. And... And they would be constantly sharing music. You know, they'll, they'll bring their their iPods and you know and uh, they'll be like listening, and it's like, oh, I really like that song, and and like, yeah, here you can have it, and they'll load it onto the other person's iPod, and uh, and and you know, and that's just what they did, and uh, yeah. and it's just <laughs> you got mail. Um, did I again? That's what I didn't Jesse notice. said. <laughs> so, but but yeah, that, that's just what it. Uh, you know what it what it seems like uh, is that most people growing up either don't care about copyright or don't follow it, or they know about it and they don't care. Yeah. And uh, and because you know, I, you know Tech Dirt uh, has posted a lot of articles about this, and they you know there was a, a an article uh, where they talked about a program like way back when in, in France like in the 1700s or something where uh, where if you copied the pattern of fabric from somebody the the punishment was death and that didn't stop fabric copying and uh, you know it's like you know if death can't stop copyright infringement then what is going to stop copyright infringement you know light uh, letters so, informing you where you can get this stuff legitimately <laughs> yeah and and now that you say that, um, <clears throat> you know, you really got to wonder. It's like, okay, where are they going to point you to? You know, you know, you you, you know, uh, where you know? Um, I think, I think uh, somebody in Australia, some politician in Australia, was was complaining because uh, uh, another politician in Australia was was saying, hey, we're going to do this for copyright uh, enforcement, and it was basically Hollywood's wish list. And this other politician just kind of chewed him out for it. And he's like, you know... <laughs> were you picking your nose just then? No, um, <laughs> I had to, had to pull the appliance out of my face because it's really bothering me. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> but the other, the other politician was like, you know, look at you know, Game of Thrones... It's like, where in Australia can you actually get Game of Thrones legitimately? And it's like, there's, there's really no place. You know, it's either you, you pay $50 a month to this one specific, uh, you know, uh, service, and you can get it, or you don't get it at all. You know, you can't download it, you can't buy it in Australia and stuff. It's like, you know, there is no legitimate source for that. And then it's the same way for a lot of stuff. That's a so. good point. I mean, what if, uh, you know, where are you going to point me if I'm downloading a copy of a video game that's long out of print <laughs> or was never yeah. released in my country? Yeah, y you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, really, uh, <clears throat> and we've said this several times before, probably you're, you're never, people are always going, and chat, please forgive me for using this word, people are always going to steal <laughs> stuff. 
You know, some people are just <laughs> going to take things without paying for it. You know, you're never, you know, there will always be shoplifters, there will always be software pirates. There are just some people who are going to do that. But I, I think you can you, so you'll, you'll never stop it. You'll never prevent people from doing that. But I think education is always a good <laughs> choice when yeah. trying to mitigate it. Giving people more options is also a great choice. Providing a, now it's it's difficult to do because you know piracy is free, but providing a better service is also something that uh, you know you need to strive to do. You know a lot of yeah. people. Game of Thrones is a great example. There was a uh, cartoon on the Onion way back when, where uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the author of the Onion was basically talking about he just wanted to watch Game of Thrones. And he tried to do it legitimately, but it wasn't available anywhere. And, uh, you know, the, the devil on his shoulder uh, says, hey, look, you could stream, you, you can download it here. And it's like, whoa, and it's in high def, and it's better, you know, it's like Blu-ray quality, and it starts instantly. It's amazing. I, you know, I just want to enjoy the show. I'd pay for it if it were available, <laughs> but, you know, you, you get that a lot. So, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, so and it was me... the oatmeal, not uh, not the onion. But... Did I say the onion? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I meant the oatmeal, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I knew it was the something. <laughs> Narrows yeah. it down. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I have people correcting me in the uh, in the chat. I I must have actually said the onion. Oops. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> eh. I knew what you meant. In my but, head, uh... it was right. <laughs> it's the autocorrect in my face. It it was it, it failed me. So yeah. um, okay, let's see what what else we got. Uh, let's talk about sex. Yay! Project Red. <laughs> okay, that that terrible song just went through my head when you said that. Um, I don't let's know. talk about <laughs> you know, sex, wanna... baby. Let's talk about <laughs> yeah. you and me. Uh, who who was, was that? <laughs> Uh, salt I pepper? don't know. Was that? I don't. God, man. I don't I have... know who sang it. But wow, the, the song is terrible. Yeah. If <laughs> you're if you're too, too young to remember that, be thankful because it was awful. <laughs> uh, anyway, CD Projekt Red uh, did an interview with uh, PlayStation Lifestyle, and they were talking uh, primarily about Witcher Three. Um, and uh, one of the things that stuck out was uh, PlayStation Lifestyle said, uh, you know, sexuality and uh, you know mature things are uh, you know a staple of the Witcher franchise. So how are you handling it in the third one? And they said uh, we make mature games for mature players. Every Witcher game is for adults only, <laughs> and sex is well a part of adult life. The key thing is not to overdo it, not to sell your game with sex, as long as you remain tactful. In, that, in, in what you do, as long as you have a legitimate reason to put sex in your game, I think it's quite safe to do so. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I, I saw a lot of outlets kind of taking this from the point where, uh, you know, CD, you know, CD is saying uh, sex can only be in games if it's treated respectfully and maturely and subtly and tactfully. I'm like, you know, like the, like the trading cards we had in the first two games. <laughs> um... <laughs> And uh, while I agree that's definitely a, a, a fine approach, I, I think there's room for, you know, smut and ridiculous things like Duke Nukem. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's... What, what do you think about the, that quote, that interview? Well, I think, uh, you know, he, he might be getting, getting to a... Um, you know, coming, coming to the conclusion, like... You know, there, there's a big difference between uh, you know I haven't played any of the Witcher's games, so I'm I'm basing this on on if I were tossed. You know, this is this is my mindset. You know, there's a big difference between the way sex is portrayed in in the Witcher versus how sex is portrayed in God of War. Mm -hmm. You know, you know they're both you know fantasy games, both fairly violent and uh, you know, but but uh, you know I, I have no idea how sex is in in either game, but from what I've heard, you know, sex is basically a uh, a quick time event game, in in Gears or in God of War, and and it's like uh, 
you know, just in your face and it's like, look at us, we're edgy, we're having sex on, on in your video game, and uh, you know, and that's just the the way it seems to come across. And so, uh, I think that's the kind of stuff that that he's saying. You know, we, adults really, you know, it's we need less of that. Is what mm -hmm. is what I'm getting out of this. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, they they mentioned just, that none of the yeah. scenes were interactive. They're they're just cutscenes. Yeah. But uh, you know, personally, I don't. I don't generally play uh, M-rated games. Uh, you know, every once in a while I do, but uh, I'm I'm very particular, and uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm I'm prudish because sex is one of those things that uh, will you know will will say no. I'm not playing that one. Um, well, you also got a bunch so, of kids in the house too, so that's true. You know, and. And generally, I don't play violent games, like overly violent games either, because of the same reason. I've got kids in the house, and, uh, you know, even after the kids go to bed, you know, there, there might be a point where one of them will wake up, and, and this has happened, uh, you know, my wife and I are watching a movie, you know, and it's nothing that, that you know, it's not, you know, it's it's nothing that we, we wouldn't normally watch, but it's just, you know, it's a movie that's probably not appropriate for a four-year-old to be cuddling us on the couch mm. while we're watching it and so you know and that, that's just kind of one of those things that that yes it does happen when we're watching a movie at 10 o'clock and one of the kids has a nightmare and wants to cuddle us so um so we have oh, to either... that's just gonna make your dreams worse Susie. <laughs> yeah exactly so so yeah i i so we just we we've made a choice not to play video games that uh where we wouldn't feel comfortable with the kids in, in the room mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so I, I tend to play a lot of T-rated games and E-rated games. You know, Kingdom Hearts is one of my favorite games ever. And and I'm actually, my son actually started playing that not too long ago. Uh, he, he likes Lego Batman better, though. Or, yeah, so he so he hasn't, he stopped playing Kingdom Hearts because I think just all the reading and, and stuff, it was just a little more difficult for him than Lego Batman was. Man, yeah, so... No, oh, that, that's that's yeah, me we, when it comes to yeah. This. We're having a bit of a discussion in the chat here about uh, strip clubs and their place in GTA, and that uh, for the most part, <laughs> you know, you could have a strip club. It you know, it could be there or not, and it wouldn't really affect the game or the story itself. There might be some sequences where the plot goes through a strip club, but um, it seems well, it's like the, the, somewhat all the of a cop superfluous shows where it's like. You know, every once in a while, the cop show will take them to a strip club, and and uh, you know this is network television, so they don't actually, you know, there's no nudity, but they're in bikinis and stuff. So mm -hmm. and yeah, that's just one of the things that, that we yeah. watch out for. Yeah, but then again, you know, the 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 driving range, the golf mini game in GTA is pointless <laughs> in that sense too. <laughs> exactly. um, yeah. I don't know how much of an actual mini game is in the. Uh, the, the strip club in GTA, at least GTA 5, as far as I know, it's just, you know, push a button <laughs> to throw dollars on the stage. You know, push a button to yeah. lean forward. Push a button to lean back. I remember that from Mass Effect. I'm <laughs> like, ooh, interactive! <laughs> this is fascinating! And it doesn't matter what you do in your chair. Lean forward, lean back. Who cares? Uh, maybe if they found, if they came up with something more interesting, I mean, you go to a golf range and you can you know, smack golf balls around. It's a game. It's fun. You know, you go to a, a billiards hall and you play billiards. Okay, you go to a strip club and I... If they found some mini... Something to that was some... If they gamified a strip club somehow, maybe, yeah. may, maybe it would work better in the context of a video <laughs> game. But yeah. it, it, it just seems, uh, since we still have not crossed the Uncanny Valley... But seem to be right at the bottom of it. I d I don't see much point in going <laughs> to a virtual. Abyss. Yeah, I don't see much. <laughs> the uncanny Mariana Trench. Um, I don't see much point to going to a virtual strip club if the only thing to do there is to ogle uh, three-dimensional polygonal ladies or men if they have a Chippendales in GTA. In GTA Six needs a it needs it needs a Chippendales. There needs to be a, uh, well, a male a strip club in there. It needs a female protagonist too. It needs a female protagonist. So there. And Ubisoft is not developing the game, so you know maybe. Um, 
yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're, that's about it for the show. Um, any anything? Any news from Comic Con? Uh, catch your interest this week? Um, did you see uh, like... Wonder Woman's costume? Yeah, I saw Wonder Woman's costume, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it's it looks all right. I, I, I'm not disappointed in it. Um, it. It's again another broody, uh, you know, I'm I'm grumpy style picture. Uh, but uh, oh, that that over sepia filter that they have on it, where you can't even yeah. tell what damn color anything is. It's like, oh, man, it's like Warner Brothers is not <laughs> aware that we're all making fun I mean it's like how did you guys not get the sad Batman meme because that was a meme that was a big thing and then their their very next poster is Superman glowering at the can't standing in the rain and over blued with his color washed out glowering at the camera looking like someone just ran over his cat and then they release a picture of Batman in almost the same po you know looking down and like he's about to, like he's about to. It's like sad Batman is still sad. And it's, yeah. it's like really, aren't you guys paying it? Either they're trolling or they're just not paying attention. But they released uh, Wonder um, Woman, I think, earlier today. And yeah. um, uh, Gal Gadot, I saw pictures of back when uh, it was announced she was taking the role, and it's like she is not large enough for an Amazon. I mean, she's. A very, very, very thin woman. I mean, she's got no meat on her bones. But I don't know if it's Photoshop or if she's been hitting the gym. She's put a little bit of size on her. I mean, she's not distractingly yeah. bony armed. Uh, she's not particularly yeah. Amazonish, but she, you know, the physical presence I, I, I think is there. So I, I think she'll be okay in the role as long as the movie itself yeah, doesn't so. suck. But uh, I don't really have a lot of high hopes for this film. Yeah, and uh, something else that, that caught my attention was uh, <clears throat> Disney announced a Guardians of the Galaxy cartoon series, and it looks like they're going to use the exact same uh, characters and animations from their their two guest appearances. In- and it's going to be a Disney XD, which means that I'm not going to be able to watch it, and it's probably going to be crap anyways. Because man, their Disney XD Marvel shows suck. They're terrible. Ah, uh, yeah. Ultimate Spider-Man was all right the first couple of seasons, but now they're doing this whole web warrior thing where he's recruiting, uh, recruiting other teen heroes, and and this season is just terrible. And uh, I, I I honestly don't know what to say about it other than this is really crap television. And it's like, and everybody's getting upgrades to their their costumes now. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, why are we upgrading costumes? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And uh, so I am, I have no faith in in Disney's uh, animation uh, uh, for Marvel stuff at all. And yeah. so I'm, I'm really not looking forward to a Guardians of the Galaxy. The cartoon. Uh, it's. The cartoon, yeah. I, I'm, yeah looking, that was announced I'm totally too. stoked about the movie. I'm, I'm totally oh, yeah, stoked about the movie. Oh, yeah, movie looks great. The cartoon, just, the cartoon, I'm just like, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, what, what else was there? I saw a, um, uh, hey, cool. The uh, Gal Gadot won Miss Israel. Huh. Good on her. Um, and yes, uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes was awesome, the cartoon. Yes, it was. <laughs> that uh, was anyway. a great cartoon series. Man. Yeah, what it, was it two seasons, or did they have a third? Uh, it was just two. Oh, that's yeah, they, they, they killed it before the third season, I, and they ended on a uh, on kind of a, not not really a cliffhanger, but just one of those, it's like, the next season is going to be awesome because, you know, th- this is going to be happening, and, yeah. and it never happened. Uh, one thing, uh, one bit of BS I heard, I think today was, um, uh, who's doing X Men? Fox, isn't it? I think it's Fox. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They were talking about Quicksilver in uh, Days of Future Past and say that was originally Juggernaut, 
And we had the whole thing storyboarded out, and we were gonna do the thing where Juggernaut drops from the sky and plows through the thing and da-da-da-da-da. But then we said, you know, <laughs> we used Juggernaut in, you know, the third movie, so we thought that, you know, we'll use a different character, and, and Quicksilver just seemed to fit right. I'm like, you are lying! Liar, liar, liar face! The only reason, the only reason you are using Quicksilver is because he's going to be in the Avengers, and you're trying to, you know, piss in Marvel's punch. Don't give me this, oh, the Juggernaut was in three, and it, it didn't seem really original to bring him back. It's like, really? Because that doesn't seem to bother you with Wolverine, who's been in every single movie. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, but, uh... don't bullshit us <laughs> like that guys come on who do you think yeah. you're kidding and uh, let's see no, what else is there. did you see the see. uh this mike tyson cartoon mike tyson's mystery solving crew <laughs> whatever it's an adult swim no cartoon. i i didn't see that yeah it uh it looks like it's going along the same humor lines as maybe <laughs> uh the black dynamite cartoon which i really really liked uh but mm -hmm. I'm not sure about this one. It might be funny, but we'll have, we'll have to see. Yeah. So. Let's see, uh, uh, I, I'm just trying to think. I haven't really been following it. Like whatever's posted on Io9 is uh, not it's, all. It's I been need. kind of a slow so. Comic Con. There, there, there's been uh, <coughs> you know a lot of the stuff we were expecting didn't happen. And uh, news well, has just been slow. But uh, th they did announce a, a, new King Kong a new King Kong. I was just going to say that. Uh, which is done by Legendary Pictures, which hopefully is paving the way for <laughs> King Kong versus Godzilla, and not that the awesome. and not the really crappy well, and, and King Kong Godzilla. versus Godzilla that already exists, yeah. and it and, is and, crappy. And Godzilla Two is awesome going point. to have Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah. Ghidorah, yeah. So, uh, so that's so pretty, they say, yeah, yeah. And they they uh, may uh, they might even be in more than five minutes of the movie. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm I'm trolling. The new Godzilla was was pretty good. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I did uh, actually went and watched uh, Captain America two today. So uh, so I, I I really like that. It's making and 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 all all that stuff <clears throat> in uh, Marvel's Agents of Shield television series finally makes more sense. But because <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know, the whole um... time like who's Agent Sitwell? Why do these people not like him? And then I and then I watched I, uh, Captain America two, and I was like, oh yeah, that's Agent Sitwell. Yeah, he was in in uh, Agents of Shield a couple of times. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. He got uh, run over by a truck. I laughed. Yeah, man. <laughs> he might be okay. <laughs> As Maybe. we said, you know, Uncle Ben is the only one who dies in the Marvel universe, so um, he might be all right. He might come back. But yeah. uh, yeah, season two of the Shield, the Shield, uh, Agents of Shield. Uh, apparently is going to have uh, Lucy Lawless, uh, so that's cool. Um, yeah. Someone's going to uh, the Mocking Bird, Mocking Jay, one of the. One, it's one of those two. The I Hunger Games or? No, no. Uh, the the, the <coughs> character. Uh, I, I think Hawkeye was married to her at one point. Oh, I have no idea. It's Mocking. Mocking Jay, Mocking Bird. So anyway, that 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 character should be in the. Uh, um, oh, okay. I, I know the character you're talking about. She was in Earth's Mightiest Heroes a couple of times, and uh, she hasn't made an appearance in okay. any of the the new in, in any of the new Avenger stuff. They had a, a Python woman or something, and and uh, Lady Viper. In the, the no, no. It's like um, they they had a, an episode of Mockingbird, uh, yeah, of Avengers Assembles where where they. Uh, Hawkeye's original villain, like Hawkeye was a villain originally, mm -hmm. and he was in this circus-themed group, and uh, and there was this lady who uh, who was in there, and she rode this giant robot python, and that was her her whole stick, and and that's that, that's that not a bad shtick to have. What what do yeah. you do? I ride a robot python. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah uh, so there's some exciting stuff, uh, and uh, it, there's a 
a movie with uh, Salma Hayek. I can't remember what the name of the movie is, but apparently Salma Hayek is like in her apartment and everyone in the world keeps rushing in to try to kill her. And the whole movie takes place in her apartment and ba I, I, and bad guys keep rushing in with guns and sighs and other things to try and kill her and she kills them all. So it's Die Hard in a single room. And I'm like, okay, that could be fun. Uh, there's, I think it's called The Kingsman. I, I don't know, well... Oh, that, I, that you, looks you interesting. Said, uh, die Hard in a singles room, single room, you know, there's uh -huh. that whole uh, devil or the elevator thing. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. um, yeah the, I think it was a Shyamalan-produced movie. Yeah, that movie was kind of terrible. <laughs> and that yeah. took place in a single room. You know, that's it's a premise that really could have worked, too, but it was just... The execution was... Yes, Jesse, <laughs> Everly, that's what it's called. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to guess that title's going to change because Everly just... I, I think it's the character's name in the film, but yeah. it's just a name that... I, although th there's a movie out now called Lucy, so... Um, and apparently that's a terrible movie, but... I, I've been hearing both. I mean, it kind of depends on what uh, your mindset is going into it. Um, yeah, well, uh, IO9's review was that it was a great superhero origin movie until the second half, and then the second half just kind of fell apart, hmm. and it wasn't worth it. <clears throat> but, yeah, well, I mean, you, you get to a point where... It's kind of like how Hancock was, where, where the first half was a really good take on a superhero movie, and then they just kind of threw all that out the window and went a totally different direction for the second, <clears throat> for the second half. <clears throat> Actually, I didn't get mail again. What you saw was a friend of mine going offline from Instant Messenger. <laughs> I should probably I should probably turn this off, but we're almost done with the show. So, um, yeah, I I think that's good for a show. Actually, we're I think probably over an hour. It's kind of hard to say because I forget what time we actually started. Yeah, I know. So, uh, yeah, let let us let us wrap up here. So. Uh, Andrew Eisen here, E I S E N. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Andrew Eisen. Uh, type it into YouTube, you'll find my YouTube stuff. I'm working on a uh, scripted video right now. Uh, I may do it at like 2 in the morning when it's a little bit cooler. Uh, Facebook, Andrew Eisen YouTube, you'll find it there. And. Um, I do a fun little series on YouTube now called Q and Andrew where I answer questions from my viewers. The last one was, what movie pisses you off the most? So I talked about uh, Babe, the talking pig movie from 95 for seven and a half minutes, and why that movie pisses me off. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, do, uh, do ask them, and uh, that's it for me. So, Zachary, plug away. <clears throat> Alright, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, EZNight, and uh, you can also follow my game development work uh, on Twitter. It's uh, at DK underscore gaming and divinenightgaming.com and there you'll see my latest uh, one game a month game uh, called Amazing Mazes and uh, there's only four of them uh, they're really easy for me to add so if I decide to add mazes later I, I they they will appear and stuff but uh, it's it's definitely fun and, and you'll probably get lost real easy um, and uh, also check out uh, on Twitter, it's OK Game Devs, and uh, it's OKGameDev.com. It's all the news about Oklahoma game development stuff, and uh, um, there's lots of great developers here that I'm um, just trying to help uh, get the word about, so check those out. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for <laughs> dropping by and uh, chatting with us in the chat. Uh, that's it for episode 107. We'll be back next week, and hopefully we'll actually start at 6, now that I know exactly what I... In, unless I find some other convoluted way to try uh, broadcasting the show. And uh, you know, hopefully no one's sound dropped out or anything bad happened. But anyway, send us an email at superpackpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at superpackpodcast. Subscribe and rate on iTunes. And like us on Facebook. So, have a... Uh, good rest of the week. We'll have a new poll for you in the next few days, and until then, we'll see you next week. Take care.